The Golden Globes happened uh, two nights ago, and I'm telling you this because the chances are you didn't already know. I only knew because part of my job is to scour the internet for all the news of the day, including the most obscure bits of news, like the Golden Globe Awards. Awards. And if the ratings are any, any indication, it would seem that most people were unaware or aware and totally uninterested in the Golden Globes. Um, now, they didn't air last year at all because the people who run the show had to take a year off to confront their racism or whatever. But this year's show was down 20% compared to 2021's broadcast, and that show in 2021 was down exponentially compared to the year before. So uh, nobody cares about this stuff anymore, and fewer and fewer people care every year. I'm not here to tell you that you should care. I'm only here to cancel someone because that's the segment. And today, it must be the host of the Golden Globes for 2023, Gerard Carmichael. Carmichael is an alleged comedian best known for coming out of the closet during one of his Netflix specials. The Golden Globes needed to find someone who checked multiple diversity boxes. And as a gay black man, Carmichael fit the bill. But is he actually a good comedian or a skilled show host? Well, that consideration was not important. And it became very obvious that it wasn't important very quickly during Carmichael's opening monologue, which you can see part of here. I'm here because I'm black. (laughs) I'll catch everyone in the room up. (laughs) If you settle down a little bit, I'll tell you what's been going on. This show, the Golden Globe Awards, did not air last year because the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which I I won't say they were a racist organization, (laughs) but they didn't have a single black member until George Floyd died. (laughs) So do with that information what you will. (laughs) I'll tell you how I got here. Why am I here on the stage with you guys tonight? Well, I was at home. (laughs) Drinking tea. And I got a phone call from my man, Stephen Hill. Uh, Stephen Hill is a great producer. And he said, Gerard, really, I'm honored to be making this phone call. He said, uh, I'm producing the 80th Golden Globes, and it would be an honor if you would agree to join as the host. I was like, whoa, (laughs) you know? Like, one minute you're making mint tea at home. (laughs) The next you're invited to be the black-faced of an embattled white organization. (laughs) Hmm, hilarious stuff. All the jokes. And this goes on for another six minutes as Carmichael recounts the story of how, the fascinating story of how he was offered the job because he's a brilliant comedian, but he knew it was really because of his race. Um, and then, uh, and he told the guy that it's because of my race. And the guy is like, no, you're great. And uh, told him he's really great. And, and then he called his friend and he, he asked her friend about it. And she told him to take the job because he's making a lot of money for it. And, and so ultimately that's what he decided to do. Though he wants the Golden Globes to know that this does not absolve them of their racism. And that was the whole monologue. That was it. The the audience members laughing uncomfortably the whole time. Terrified that the cameras would show them reacting in a way that Twitter deems inappropriate. That's that's the only funny thing about the monologue, potentially. It's nothing to do with with what he's saying. But it's just because people in the audience, they're like, I don't know. Because they know that at any moment, the the camera could show them. And, And so they're listening to a gay black man. And, and they're not sure, is he trying to be funny? Am I supposed to laugh at this? Am I, or if I laugh, am I, in, am I in trouble? I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to be crying? Am I, what am I supposed to do here? So what are the problems? Well, first of all, um, comedians are supposed to be funny. And uh, you know, I, I know this is a controversial statement these days and certainly will come as a great shock to most modern comedians, but comedians are supposed to be funny. That's the whole job. Gerard Carmichael isn't funny. So he doesn't seem to have understood the assignment. Now, you might object to my comedians are supposed to do comedy theory by saying that, well, sometimes a comedian might want to make a more serious or insightful point. They don't all, they don't all have to be Mitch Hedberg up there delivering a bunch of uh, one-liners and non-sequiturs. This is true, though we can only wish that most modern comedians were as good as Mitch Hedberg. But the point is that a comedian is supposed to make those serious and insightful points 
while also being funny. That's difficult to do, but those in the profession of being funny are supposed to be able to do that because that's their profession. I mean, literally anyone can stand up on stage and ramble. It takes skill to not only make an insightful point, but to do it while being funny. Yet that's the skill that comedians, by definition, are supposed to have. It doesn't make any sense for a comedian to not even try to be funny. It's like going to see a juggling act, and instead of juggling, the juggler stands in front of you and delivers an, an economics lecture. Now, even if the, if the lecture is good, it's, it's got nothing to do with juggling. Now, if you talk about economics while juggling, that might be interesting. That would take some actual talent. But we see this sort of thing all over society, and not just with comedians. There is a severe lack of talent, particularly in the arts. So we lack talented comedians, artists, painters, musicians, poets, filmmakers. These are the people who, who, uh, who don't actually have the talents necessary to perform their craft at a high level. So they compensate by pretending that they're being bad on purpose. That's like our whole culture now. It's just, is, is, is you're bad at it, but you're pretending it's on purpose. We've made bad into its own style, its own genre, so that we can all pretend that the artist is engaging in some kind of bold deconstruction of the art form instead of facing the fact that he just simply sucks at his job. Second, Carmichael allowed himself to be the token black guy, the diversity hire. He thinks he can get around this or negate it by acknowledging it up front. He thinks that, you know, that makes the whole performance meta and subversive. When in reality, he's just a sellout with an imagina- without an imagination. This is another thing we see all the time now in art, especially anything involving Hollywood. Hollywood is constantly making bad films, that, uh, that, and there are films that acknowledge their own badness. And that acknowledgement is supposed to, in itself, transform the badness into something good. Superhero movies are the worst offenders of this sort of thing. These films, they, they wink at the audience constantly, admitting to the corny and cliched nature of the whole thing while continuing along doing the corny and cliched thing. Now, this might have been funny the first time it was done 20 years ago, but 100 movies and 1,000 winks later is just a crutch used by lazy, boring writers. In fact, it's gotten so bad now that the finale of the She-Hulk series, um, the, the, the season finale, which, of course, I didn't watch, but from what I read, it actually had the character, She-Hulk, walk through the screen and confront the writers of her own show to complain about the bad writing. Now, this was supposed to be subversive, once again, and self-aware and funny, but instead it was just a direct admission by the writers that they are not good at their jobs. It's not just superhero movies. In Glass Onion, the sequel to Knives Out, the detective solves the murder, discovering that it was the most obvious culprit all along. Like, it's the guy that was obvious. It was obviously that guy the whole movie. And then in the end, they say, yep, it was that guy, right? You had it solved from the beginning. And then he repeatedly acknowledges, the detect- detective does in the film, that the murderer is stupid and obvious and lazy, which is just another way of acknowledging that the writer of the film is himself stupid, obvious, and lazy. These people have so thoroughly run out of things to say that now they're actually talking about how they have nothing to say. Third, most importantly, Even if we can forgive Carmichael for being an unfunny sellout and we're willing to sit back and listen to his lecture, we'll discover that what he's saying about race is not the slightest bit brave or bold or risky. That's how it was sold. That's how the media reacted to it. They said it was blistering. It was a a blistering monologue. And there were people on social media saying it it was brilliant. It was brave. It was courageous. Well, it can never be brave for a liberal black person to confront a bunch of white people about their racism. There is no version of a white people are racist speech delivered by a black person that can ever be brave in our culture. The reason it cannot be brave is that it it has been done a million times already, and every time it's done, it is guaranteed to be applauded by all of the most powerful people in the country, including and especially the ones you're calling racist. You cannot be brave if you're saying something that every Hollywood executive and Fortune 500 CEO and politician would publicly agree with. Even if what you're saying is right, it can't possibly be brave. There's nothing brave about your willingness to be applauded for being brave. Now, if Carmichael wanted to actually be brave and subversive and transgressive, he would have stood in front of that audience and would have told them that as a black man, he is not oppressed in America, that um, anti-black systemic racism is imaginary, and that white guilt is a disease infecting a large portion of the population, including everyone sitting in that room. 
Now, that would have been a bold statement on a stage like that. It would have also easily been, you know, much funnier. Or you know what? Maybe strike that. Because even more subversive and and certainly uh, more funny would be to say nothing at all about race. Okay? The truly bold move would be for the first black person, and, and not only that, but a black gay person, to host the Golden Globes and then give a monologue that isn't about being the first black person to hold the, host the Golden Globes. Okay, In that environment, in that atmosphere, for that guy to stand up there and give a monologue that, that where he's telling jokes that aren't about the fact that he's black, now, that would be a curveball. That's something that nobody would see coming. But instead, he went the safe route and the unfunny route, and that ultimately is why he is today canceled. That'll do it for this portion of the show. As we move over to the members block, you can become a member today and use code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you over there. If not, talk to you tomorrow, or rather, talk to you next week when we have two more kids. Um, Godspeed.